Hi everyone, welcome to September's Book of the Month Battle where we'll be comparing Bronwyn Scott's How to Disgrace a Lady with Georgette Hayer's These Old Shades. The reason we thought we'd um, put these two up against each other is because they both explore the same kind of Cinderella, My Fair Lady makeover theme and to help me do this is the lovely Anna Bateman who is Georgette Hayer's biggest fan. Hi everyone, I'm Anna and I'm really happy to be here to talk about Georgette Hare. I do love her quite a lot, I think she's a fantastic writer. And when Flo said that they were picking Bronwyn Scott for the book of the month, I just thought this was the perfect comparison. What I really love about Bronwyn Scott's spin on the Cinderella fantasy is the really scandalous um, edge that she gives it. So for example, in this book, you have the hero, Merrick, who is caught compromising his blue stocking heroine, Alex, and he's given a choice to either marry her himself, which is obviously the last thing he wants, or to transform her into um, this marriageable, like, cream of society lady. So there's, like, the one strand of teaching her how to become this lady, but the much more exciting, sexy strand of teaching her how to seduce men. And for me, that was just such an exciting, fun, like, rompy part of the story, which I really, really loved. I uh, totally agree that the scandalous edge of Roman Scott is one of the things that makes her such a fantastic writer. The Georgette Hare is more of a perhaps traditional classic spin on the My Fair Lady story. He literally takes the heroine from the very bottom of society in those days right to the top, to from the streets to, to being a lady. And I love that. I love the, the very classic journey and the fact that she's almost already a lady and he just has to give her the chance to realise that potential. But I also really like the idea that just as in the Fair Lady film, she actually exceeds his expectations and becomes a more powerful lady than he was expecting. So the power balance between them shifts right at the end. I think it's one of the things that makes it a great romance. Yeah, completely agree that Leonie in These Old Shades is a really sort of strong heroine, but to me she doesn't really have anything on Alex, the Bronwyn Scott heroine, who's just the usual sort of feisty, sparkly heroine that Scott writes so well. Um, but having said that, for me, the book, the sort of entry point to the book really is the absolutely like stunningly gorgeous hero, Merrick. And I think Scott sets him up so well because the book sort of actually opens with this amazing scene of um, Merrick trying to seduce two notorious um, London courtesans like at the same time and he's sort of, this is a bet, he's going to get paid for it. So you've got this incredible image of him as basically like a Regency gigolo, but he's just so, it really sets up that scandalous, sort of dangerous edge to the story that then just runs throughout the whole thing and it's just a really, really makes for such a fantastic read. While Merrick, the hero from the Bronwyn Scott, is completely gorgeous, I actually think that the hero, Duke of Avon, from um, the Hare could probably take him. Because the thing is about him, he's actually quite different from most of the other historical heroes I've ever read. When you first meet him, he comes along and he's wearing this white wig and he's got like powder all over his face and you think, God, you're wearing a jeweled waistcoat, surely you're not the hero. But then the heroine actually runs into him, she's running away from her evil brother, and he grabs her ruthlessly. And that's the point when you realise that underneath this seemingly quite idiotic person is this very powerful, very ruthless, very exciting man. And it's that contrast that I think really takes him a step further into being a fantastic character. The other really interesting thing about the hero and the hair, and actually it's the same for the um, Bronwyn Scott, is that although he's at the top of his game, he is massively powerful, all of society is kind of fears him and loves him, he is also quite empty and his, he finds his life empty. And it's that potential, it's that darkness to him that actually gives later potential for the heroine to appear. Yeah, I completely agree. What works so well with the Scott is that even though the hero is this incredibly like sexually experienced sort of society rake and the heroine is just like miles away from him in terms of any kind of like worldly experience, it's actually her innocence and that really like brings him to his knees and together like they emotionally are both as much like a novice as each other and they actually sort of grow and learn together like right up to their happy ending. And I think overall for me, like that's what I love so much about this story is that it has all the sort of perfect elements of a great like Regency romance. So it's witty, it's sexy, it's rompy, like it's a real like adventurous, like fun read. But at the heart of it is this incredibly sweet, heartwarming romance of these two characters, complete opposites attract who manage to find love in like the most unlikely of places. 
I um, totally agree that the Bronwyn Scott really does have a very warm tone. You turn the final bit of the book and you feel so happy. Um, the hair does exactly the same kind of lift at the end, uh, but the tone of the story overall is, I think, a little bit different. I think it's a bit darker. I think the Duke of Avon is harder to redeem than the, ha than the um, Scott hero, actually. And Leonie is less feisty, perhaps, but actually loves him unconditionally from a fairly point early on in the story. And without that unconditional love, you really get a sense that the hero would be lost. Okay, so that's what we think. Um, lots of interesting points of comparison and I think what I found really interesting about that discussion was that even though both these books tackle essentially quite similar story arcs, that they actually can be so different in their execution. But as ever, we'd really love to know what, um, what you think of either of the books, but obviously particularly the Scott, so as ever, just get in touch.